Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our English. We want to improve our vocabulary. Today is our day number 52. Unlike the yesterday, unlike the day number 51 where I had all the words which were related to each other, they were all synonyms, sometimes I have a set of words where they are synonyms, they are antonym, and there is something going on there. There is some sort of a confluence from one word to the other. The word that I just used was confluence, C-O-N-F-L-U-E-N-C-E, -E, confluence. If you want to learn the word properly, go and uh, just type in Keshwani Prayer dash vocab dash D9 and you will learn it properly. Confluence simply means coming together. If you have two bodies of water, if two rivers come together and merge into one, that's called confluence, coming together. So sometimes there are confluence of ideas where there is a theme and they all come together. And sometimes I have words which are simply discrete. Oh, here's a good word, another one. Discrete. And uh, I know we covered it also. There you go. Discrete. Now don't confuse this discrete with this discrete where you take the E at the end and you put it in front of the T and it has two E's. These are two different words and they have two different meanings. I'm not going to go into those two words right now because that's not what we're here for. If you want to learn these two words, just type in Keshwani prep dash vocab dash day eight and you will learn this word and the confluence in day nine. Discrete simply means uh, they are separate, they are, they are, they are in, in, in themselves, separate unit, discrete. In, mathemat in mathematics we talk about a discrete function and continuous functions. For example, for example, this is a continuous function, whereas something like this, this is a discrete function. For the value of x up to here, the y is this much, and for the value of x from here to here, the y is that much. So this is a discrete function. This is the discrete function. This is a continuous function. So sometimes the, the words that I that we learn that I want to cover, there is certain confluence, they come together somehow, and sometimes they are just discrete, they are separate, they have nothing to do with each other. That's what I'm trying to say here. And today is one of those days where the words that I want to cover. There are three or four words that I want to talk about today and they, they, are, they are completely unrelated with each other. They have nothing to do with each other. Okay, here we go. The first word is obviate. 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 What does it mean? Obviate means, uh, let me first explain it before I put down the meanings on the blackboard. Obviate means that you anticipate something ahead of time as to what is going to happen and you take the countermeasure, you do something uh, based on what you anticipate what's going to happen in the future and you make something unnecessary from having to do. Uh, let's see if I can think of an example. Uh, let me first write down the meaning. In the meantime I'll think of an example. Make something. unnecessary to prevent something from happening by anticipating or thinking ahead of time which of course is the same as anticipating thinking ahead of time or, or by taking countermeasure countermeasures if you like I still cannot think of a good example where I can use the word obviate uh, Well, perhaps it will come to me later. It just means that uh, you anticipate that something is going to happen and you take uh, actions ahead of time and therefore that thing becomes unnecessary, uh, uh, prevented from happening. If, uh, if you're going, let me give you a, a simple example, I can't think of anything better. If you go into a certain office for a certain bureaucrat and uh, uh, you know that he's going to ask you for such and such form and ask you to come back later for it, 
uh, so you take countermeasure, you, you go prepared, you take everything, you, you, you take with you things even that you don't think it's going to ask you for it, just in case if it does, you obviate having to go uh, for him to having to say that come back tomorrow with this or that, because you got everything that you did that, that is there. So you obviate, you eliminate the necessity of having to do a second step. Second, second step. Uh, I cannot talk today, and having to go back tomorrow. The word that we that we just used here was counter. Let's talk about this word. Countermeasure is the word here. I want to cover it by itself. Counter. What does it mean? As it, usually, it is used as a prefix. As a prefix, countermeasure, and I'll give you some more example. It simply means contrary. I cannot spell contrary. See, there is no U in it. Opposing. Opposite. Or opposing. I'm going to give you some example of where you will see this, where you may have seen this word counter. I shouldn't say word, where, where you may have seen this prefix counter. Uh, I'll give you some example. For example, counteract. To counteract means to uh, do something which is going to, uh, to undo somebody else, somebody else's act. Somebody is going to act in a certain way and you counteract it, you undo it, you negate it. Counterattack. Counterbalance. It's one word, even though I lifted my hand. Countercheck. Somebody checks something and you're going to double check it, you're going to countercheck it. Counterclaim. Usually in a courtroom, in, in a lawsuit, somebody uh, sues somebody for something and the other person turns around and sues the other person, the first person, for something else. The counterclaim. That's called a counterclaim. And finally, this last one I find it amusing. Americans like to call this thing counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. Where I come from, we call them, we call this such same concept anti-clockwise counterclockwise as in you have a clock here which goes like this but if you're going in this direction you're going anti-clockwise which they like to call counterclockwise you see oh, opposite Op opposing where do you go contrary opposing opposite counterclockwise clockwise the anti-clockwise is what they refer to as counterclockwise counterclaim Counter check, counteract, counter attack, counterbalance. There are many such words. It just means opposite. Let's move on then. The next word, as I said before already, these words have nothing to do with each other, so they are completely unrelated. I need to erase everything. The next word I have is an interesting word. I don't know why I find it interesting, but you can't go by what I find interesting, what I find fascinating. That is assuming that you have a life. The word is tome. What is a tome? A tome is a large, bulky, heavy book, a tome. That's all. That's all it is. That's what it means. Uh, let me see if I can give you an example. Let's see. A couple of books here. See, this, this book is not a tome. This on the other hand is a tome. It's large, it's heavy, it's bulky. This one is not. So a large, heavy, bulky book is simply called a tome. A scholarly book, a book that is a, a scholarly book, if you like. It's 
So when you say a heavy book, heavy could be actually in a literal sense of the word because it's a large, heavy, bulky book as I just showed you. Or it could also be in a metaphorical sense, a heavy book as in a uh, scholarly book. Erudite, very difficult to understand. Oh boy, these words come out of nowhere. We'll, we'll cover this later. A scholarly book. It could also be a book. It could also be a book. It could also be one of the book. It could also be one of the books in a series of volumes. So there are there are fifteen volumes in it. That one volume would uh, usually there are thick volumes there, and they are referred to as a tome. Do not confuse the pronunciation of this word tome as opposed to as opposed to tomb. And now, right now, of course, obviously, I am doing it this part. Obviously, I am doing it for the benefit of the non-native speaker of English. If you're a native speaker, obviously you don't need the specific basic les lessons, but for non-native speakers, tomb, where you bury a person, tomb, and tomb. Let's go on to the next word then. The la next word that I have right today is, I'm going to erase this now, we don't need it. next word we have is the word that I've used uh, many a times in my lectures and I keep uh, telling myself that I'll cover it one day and today happens to be one of those days. Today happens to be that day, rather. The word is impetus. What is an impetus? An impetus is a force, it's a stimulus that makes you do something. It uh, finally gives the push, the final nudge to get you going, to get your get up, uh, get up your uh, there you are and do something. That final that push there is called the impetus. A force just a lousy handwriting. An impulse or stimulus to do something that causes you to do something that causes you to do something. It's an impulse that causes you to do something. It's a stimulus that causes you to do something. And finally, the last word in the, in the list here is prod. And if you want to learn, if you want to learn the word prod, you can go to day number twelve. Just type in Keshwani Prep dash vocab dash day twelve, and you will learn this word properly. So let me first quickly talk about the word prop uh, without actually prod without actually going into too much detail. Prod has two meanings. It means uh, it has a metaphorical meaning and it has a it has a literal meaning. Literally, to prod uh, uh, someone uh, means is usually used in the context of an uh, animal. Back in the old days, when people used to ride the horse buggies and ride on the horses and animals and so forth, or in the fields, they would have some implement, some sort of a stick or something. Then they will poke in the animal's uh, body uh, to make it go faster. They will poke in his ribs, in the horse's rib, with the, the stick. That not hitting the animal, but rather poking the animal. That action of poking the animal to tell the animal that you want it to go faster. That process is called prodding. That's what it means literally. Metaphorically, it, it metaphorically simply means that uh, you give somebody a push, a stimulus, an impulse uh, to finally make them to do something. That is called prodi, that is called an impetus. That's all, that's all we have today. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring for SAT, GRE, GMAT, TOEFL, uh, Algebra, Geometry, Statistics, for any of those purposes, you can go to any of these website addresses that you see there. 
and send me an email or you can simply go to kishwaniprep.com and you can get hold of me from there as well. Okay, thank you.